Welcome back class. My name is Steve Hartman. I'm a correspondent with CBS News and I'm also your instructor for Kindness 101. Next to me I have Meryl who is my co-teacher and back there behind the camera is my son Emmett. Say hi Emmett. Hello. <laughs> First I want to thank everyone who did last week's assignment. That class was about courage and if you missed it you can find it by going to cbsnews.com slash kindness 101. You can find all of our classes there. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can start from the very beginning you want to, and go to this one you if could. you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, our last one was about courage, and the assignment was to try something hard. Remember that? I know you remember that. Uh, didn't matter if you succeeded or not, the point was to just try. And you decided to try bike riding. How did that go? I made progress. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at some of the videotape. Okay. This was something new for you, right? Yeah. And did you go for at least a little while? Yeah. You got a lot of protective gear there in case something goes wrong. If you don't have that, no offense. None taken. No. You about ran me over there. Really? And you know, you weren't the only one who tried bike riding. You encouraged some other kids to try too. Okay, this is Lily Lloyd. She is five years old and she was petrified, Meryl. She didn't even want to try. Have courage. And her mom said that the only reason she did try was because she watched our class on courage. And look, she's doing pretty good. Great. You got to keep going. And this girl, this is Eva Brown. She had never ridden before. And she was inspired too. This is for Meryl. This is for Meryl, she said. <laughs> okay, I right, can go back here. Now we're going to go on to today's lesson, which is optimism. Meryl, what is optimism? Um, an optimistic person look on the bright side. Yeah, that's good. It's like hopefulness, right? Yeah, yeah it's like being positive. And um, pessimistic is um being not positive. Right. The opposite of optimistic is pessimistic, right? Yeah. Right? Agree on it? Yeah. Thumbs up. There's a saying that optimistic people look at the glass half full. And pessimistic people look at the glass half empty. Like an optimistic person, how would an optimistic person look at that glass of juice? Um, even a little bit of orange juice is still delicious. Yeah, but it doesn't even have ice. It still tastes good without ice. It would still taste good, but, you know, I don't even have any to share. Someday, maybe, I may be able to get more. And it's not as orange as I would like. And just put orange food dye in it. <laughs> <laughs> orange food dye. Is there such a thing as orange food dye? <laughs> I think there is. No. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think so. See what happened there, boys and girls? Meryl and I had very different thoughts, but the amount of juice in the glass didn't change. It's all about your attitude and how you look at the glass. Half full or half empty? Optimistic people, they always have this attitude that things are going to work out. Uh, they have faith that, that things are going to be okay. And somehow, some way, when you believe things are going to be okay, I don't know why this is, Meryl, even against all odds, they turn out okay. They turn out better than you could have possibly imagined, like in this story. For as long as her parents can remember, 11-year-old Brianna Carsey has had this crazy dream. Hmm? She has always wanted a brood mare, a mommy horse that would give birth to a baby horse that would grow up to become a racing champion. This was a fairy tale for her from day one. We put it off for five years almost because we don't have a farm. So we gotta go rent stalls somewhere. This sounds expensive. Yeah. Why don't you say no? Well, as she'll tell you, she has me wrapped around her finger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> her foal, an Ohio standard bred, was born in the spring of 2013. She named it MJB Got Faith. MJB for the initials of the kids in her family, and got faith for the faith she instantly had in him. I really loved him. From the beginning? Mm hmm He's super soft, too. <laughs> Sweet. But that quick bond posed a real problem for this pushover dad. Come here, bud. See, for whatever reason, Brian thought once he explained to his daughter that her horse could never race, that it was a runt from poor breeding stock, she would just agree to sell it. But... Obviously not. <laughs> She's like, there's no price, Daddy. So I'm talking to my wife. It's like, you know, we really got ourselves in a mess here. Yeah. And I don't know how we're going to get out of this. So we stake him to the races. This horse that doesn't belong in the races. The horse that I thought we should have gotten rid of already. <laughs> he was more about the money. What were you seeing that your dad wasn't seeing? He didn't believe in him. 
Brian was stuck, committed to boarding and training this long shot to end all long shots. Yep. And this is not a wealthy family. Brian runs a small logistics company, and Ohio Racing, which is harness-style racing, is a $900 million a year industry. I want to see him go fast. MJB Got Faith was so slow he barely even qualified to compete. But then somehow, some way, won his first race, won his second race, his third, and his fourth qualifying him for the state championship held recently in Columbus, Ohio. And I said, baby, if you finish third, you should be so thankful. She goes, daddy, if he finishes last, I'm going to be thankful. But he's going to win. <laughs> and so it was that this little horse with no pedigree, this pet, with no reason for being here beyond the blind faith of a little girl. Won an Ohio Sire Stakes Championship. She said, Dad, I told you, you gotta have faith. Brianna took home $100,000 that day. She has already given away half of it to charity. And as for the other half, she plans to use that money as a down payment on a farm. I just wanna have a farm and be able to go walk out my back door and see him. And that's her plan for happily ever after. Just a girl, her horse, and knowing her father. Dad, can we please get a cat? No. Probably a cat, too. Part of optimism is believing in yourself, believing in other people, and sometimes other horses, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but how do you get to be optimistic? Well, you start by doing this. What am I doing? <laughs> Smiling. Smiling, exactly right. Smiling is the first thing you need to do to be an optimistic person. You have to smile even if you don't feel like smiling. I think, you know, a lot of times people think that smiling is a reflex. Like, oh, something funny happens or I'm happy and I smile. It is. It can be. It just happens naturally. But it doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes you can use your smile consciously to make yourself more optimistic. Sometimes a smile can come first and the happiness can follow. You want to show me a smile? <laughs> I've been showing smiles in all of these classes. <laughs> You've been showing smiles in all these classes? I know. You've yeah. been very optimistic throughout this whole process. <laughs> um, I've got another story I want to show you. It's about a guy with a great smile. Just a great smile. And I think his smile might play a pretty big part in his optimism and in his success. Watch this. Here at Port Berry Elementary in Port Berry, Louisiana, we found the most contagious smile in Cajun country. It belongs to elementary school principal Gabe Saunier, and it comes so naturally, it's like his face has no other option. Can you even make a frown? I mean, that's, that's your frown? The, that's the one you're going to get. You can't, you're just incapable you, you, of it. it the, the smile just wants to break out, and that's, that's just me. You know, that's just me, Mr. Hartman, that's just me. The guy clearly loves his job. I started in, in November. He's new to the principal position, but he's been working at this same school for more than 30 years. In fact, Mr. Sonye began his career in education just down the hall. Well, I really got y'all started. This was your office? This is our office right here. Office in the most liberal sense of the word. This is a mop room. This is a mop room. Mr. Saunier's incredible journey from janitor to principal began in 1985, when then-principal Wesley Jones pulled him aside one day. And he said, I'd rather see you grading papers than pick him up. No one had ever believed in him that much. I took it to heart. So, at the age of 39, whenever he wasn't cleaning classrooms, he was studying in them. Got his teaching degree, and shortly after, his first teaching job. Then came the masters. <laughs> it is something. <laughs> it is something. And yet, despite all the degrees and the new job, Gabe Sonye hasn't forgotten where he came from. Believe it or not, he still cleans his own office. Obviously, you can take the janitor out of the mop room, but you can't take the work ethic out of the janitor. And there's a lesson in there for boys and girls and grown-ups everywhere. Very good. Don't let your situation that you're in now define what you're going to become later. I always tell them it's not where you start, it's how you finish. And Mr. Sonye isn't finished yet. 
Before we left, he confessed that he wouldn't mind being superintendent someday. I, I, I think I'd welcome him. I think <laughs> Does I'd the welcome superintendent him. know this? <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, it's not where you start, it's how you finish. And that's what an optimistic person says. He's, it's not like, here I am in the mop room, I'm going to be stuck here forever. That's what a pessimistic person would say, right? Well, let's see if he's still that way, boys and girls. Gabe is joining us now. Hey, how you doing? Doing fine, Steve. Good morning Good. to you all. Our class today is about optimism. How much do you think your smile, your ubiquitous smile, played in your success? Uh, I can't imagine me not having it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel as though you can overcome anything. Were you ever pessimistic? Well, I think at, at some time or another we are. <laughs> Sometimes we you know we, we think that uh, I'm never going to be any more than this. I'm never going to do any more than that. And then all of a sudden, then it's it, something comes back around and says, okay, no, you can. So when you get in those funks, when you get a little pessimistic, how do you get yourself out? I'll do a little prayer, or I would go to my wife and we'd have a talk. <laughs> and then she said, you know, I know your potential and I, I know what you can with the one. So don't worry about that. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So to be optimistic, you start with a smile. The other thing we know is that doing random acts of kindness also makes you more optimistic, makes you more positive. Watch this story. Typically, post office lines breed anger and frustration. But at the head of this queue on the campus of Penn State University in State College, Pennsylvania, you'll find nothing but joy. I love coming in here. My mission is to make them have a little bit of levity on the way out and to say, hey, not so bad after all. Oh, nice nails. To that end, Thank you. Mike Kerr lives by a simple yeah, motto. Nice. If you can't say something nice, nice about nice. someone, that is one of the nicer coats. You're just not looking That's hard great. enough. You did a good job. Even if it's only how nicely they filled out their forms. You're natural. <laughs> and he's been like this with just about every customer nice. every day for 38 Yo, years. Nice too. Very nice. How do you keep this up for so long? I, you're stumped by that question. I did, I did. This is what I do. I'm just myself. You know, that's all I can do. How's your mom doing? The man really is pure heart. Take it easy. Which is part of the reason the lines are so long here. You come in to buy stamps when you don't need stamps. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Nicole Logan is a regular. Because he just makes your day so much better. These are for you, Mike. Thank you very much. And because kindness begets kindness, Mike gets quite a few special deliveries himself. <laughs> the kids have made him grand marshal of the homecoming parade. And once in 2000, when the postmaster told Mike he had to take down all the posters and pictures decorating his office. Now is the time for action. The kids took to the streets. Mike the mailman is the greatest, most dedicated mailman I've ever met in my entire life. And to think Mike has earned this much loyalty and devotion just by talking to them at a counter. Very delightful looking package, huh? Thank you. You really have no idea who you're going to influence and when you're going to influence them. Does that make sense? Michael Aikenhead okay. is a high school teacher in Connecticut. Definitely he got his master's at Penn State. And although he didn't know Mike the Mailman very well, Michael years later, when he was awarded Teacher of the Year in his district, guess who he thanked for his success? The one person I'm always going to remember and probably taught me the most about life was actually Mike the Mailman. It was honestly his example that kind of taught me it's not what you do in life, but it's how you do it. Now that's something to write home about. Have a good day. Ah, thanks. Hi. Mike the mailman was very optimistic, wasn't he? And he got that way by giving little compliments. Meryl, your hair looks so nice today. Thank you. Wow. I feel so much more optimistic. <laughs> you try it. Um, you look very handsome today. Thank you. How do you feel? Very optimistic. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and the nice thing about giving compliments or performing a random act of kindness is that it doesn't just make you feel more optimistic, it can make the other person more optimistic too. Once did a story about a little girl who met a very pessimistic man, but she was so optimistic, she knew just what to do. Watch this story. Not long ago, in a cemetery outside Augusta, Georgia, a loving couple was buried. The wife buried below this white bouquet. The husband buried above in a mound of grief. Took me totally by surprise. 82-year-old Dan Peterson says after Mary died, he fell into a deep depression. Spent days just staring out at the squirrels. What were you living for? 
I was trying to figure that out, frankly. You had no purpose? No. Were you just waiting to die? Yeah. For six months, it was just that bad. And then one day you go to a grocery store. <laughs> it all changed inside this Publix. Dan was nearing the end of the canned vegetable aisle. He hates grocery shopping, and by all accounts, the expression on his face confirmed his aggravation. But that's when this unapproachable man was approached by a four-year-old girl named Nora Wood. In the security footage, you can see Nora randomly reaching out to him. Her mom, Tara, says it was quite embarrassing. She stood up and said, hi, old person, it's my birthday today. Old person? Old person. Hi, old person. She says this to this cranky old man? Yeah. And then had the audacity to demand a hug. I said, a hug? I said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Nora got her hug and then asked her mom to take a picture of her with her new friend. She zeroed in on him like a missile. And she didn't want anything from him. She just wanted to make him feel loved and give him a hug. And his little lip quivered and he was teared up and it was just sweet. And I said, you don't know. This is the first time for quite a while that I've been as happy. That all happened a couple months ago and his grin has only gotten wider since. Hi, sweetheart, come in, come in. Today, Nora visits at least once a week. So how's my sweetie, huh? And every time, it's the grocery store all over again. I knew I was gonna get a hook. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Totally unbelievable. It's a bridge. It's a bridge, oh, okay. Dan does have grandkids of his own, but they're all grown and gone. And Nora does have grandparents, but her mom says this is a completely different kind of bond that almost defies explanation. She fell asleep holding a picture of them. I, I, what? <laughs> to Dan, it's equally miraculous, but far less mysterious. He believes Nora is, quite literally, an angel. She opened me to a love that I didn't know existed. Dan, let me ask you. When your wife died, you felt like you didn't have any purpose anymore. Do you feel like you have a purpose now? Of course. No. Watching her grow up. I know I made room in my heart for a lot more. See how Nora's optimism squashed Dan's pessimism? Gave him a whole new reason to live, really. It's like that saying that Meryl has here. You want to show them that? What does that say? Every cloud has a silver lining. What does that mean, Meryl? It means every bad thing has a good part to it. Right. Like if we look at the picture you got here, I love this picture you got. You got a dark cloud, and you could look at this dark cloud here as Dan losing his wife. And then here, this is the silver lining. He met Nora. That's he, the silver lining. He met Nora. That's the silver lining. Every dark cloud has a silver lining. We just need to look for them sometimes. And when you find that silver lining, that's optimism. That's what it is. Okay, so let's go over what we've learned today. We talked about how wearing a smile can make you more optimistic. We talked about how doing little acts of kindness can make you more hopeful. And now I have one final suggestion. Think of what you have to be grateful for. Because when, you're, when you spend your day thinking about what you're grateful for, Pretty soon, you start to see the whole world is full of positive things. Which leads me to our homework assignment. I want you to take 10 pennies and put them in your pocket. Or you could take 10 pebbles or 10 Smarties. Um, but I wouldn't do 10 green beans. No. No, or definitely not 10 earthworms. No, no. anything Ten. That's, that can fit in your pocket. And is not slimy. Yeah. Okay, take 10 non-slimy things and put them in your left pocket. And then as you go through your day, I want you to think about things that you're grateful for. No, take 10 of anything that is not slimy. Right. Isn't that what I said? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> you just wanted to re yeah. reinforce it. <laughs> so take 10 things and put, put, put those 10 things in your left pocket. Then as you go through your day, Look for things to be grateful for. And when you find something to be grateful for, 
move one of the pennies or one of the pebbles or one of the smarties, definitely not one of the earthworms, <laughs> into your right pocket. So that by the end of the day, hopefully, you will move all 10 objects from your left pocket to your right. And the reason that I want you to do that is because if you spend your day looking for the things that you have to be grateful for, looking at the great things you have in your life, you'll end that day feeling more optimistic. You think it'll work? Think so? I think so too. And that leads nicely into our next class, which is going to be about... Gratitude. Gratitude. You can find that class at cbsnews.com slash kindness101 starting next Monday, or wherever you found this video, it'll also be there. We also love to hear from you. If you want to send us a note or an email, you can send that note to kindness101 at cbsnews.com. We read all your emails, so tell us what you're thinking. So hopefully we'll see you next week, and until then, stay kind.